Reverse mortgages are a hot topic among retirees these days, as well as those thinking about retirement. When you hit that magic age of 62, salespeople seem to come out in force urging you to take advantage of the equity in your home to support your current lifestyle. But beware, a reverse mortgage is not for everyone. Here to share some tips on how to decide if a reverse mortgage is right for you is Terry Daniel with Consumer Credit Counseling Services of West Florida. Terry, thanks for being here. Thanks for asking. Well, now let's just clarify real quick here. We're not saying that reverse mortgages are bad. We're just saying that there may be a more appropriate time or people need to be educated about the products, correct? Exactly, because it's a unique product and it's individual to each person's needs. Okay, so it is a, a good product if it's the right fit, and I um, appreciate you coming on today to help people try to identify if that uh, fit is there for them. So for those that may not be familiar, probably most people are familiar with the term re reverse mortgage. Just give us a quick overview of what that really means. Uh, it's a loan for those 62 and older that own their own homes, a uh, loan you don't have to pay back for as long as you live in your home. Um, you continue to own the home and there are no credit or income requirements and um, continue to be the homeowner. Um, well, it sounds too good to be true, so there are some <laughs> things obviously people need to think about. But first question is, how is the loan amount that you receive from that equity in your home determined? Um, through a, a number of factors, um, a client's age, the interest rate at the time the loan closes, um, the property value. Uh, in general, the older you are, the more money you receive, and the more valuable your home, the more money you receive. Now, how are these payments received? Are these monthly? Are they a one-time thing, annual? How, how are the payments actually um, sent out? A uh, number of ways. You can take a regular monthly payment uh, for as long as you're in your home. Uh, monthly payment for a specific number of months, uh, line of credit, you draw from it when and if you need it, and it's allowed to grow, uh, lump sum of money, and any combination thereof. And um, what a person decides at closing as to how they receive their funds isn't written in stone. They can make a change in the future if they so wish. Okay. Well, again, it sounds just really like a great deal, but everything, as we know, has pros and cons. Let's talk about some of the, the drawbacks that people may not be that aware of. Um, well, the one are the heirs. If you want to leave the home and the equity to your heirs, and that's important to you, you may not want to do the reverse mortgage because you are using some of the equity and it does affect the heirs that they would, it would reduce their um, inheritance. Um, so what would actually happen to the home uh, in the event of the person's death as far as uh, in relation to their heirs? Um, a couple of ways they can go about re uh, returning, repaying those funds. Um, one would be just selling the home. Um, something that is good with this product is that a person can never owe more than their home is worth at the time the loan is due. Mm -hmm. um, the heirs, if they want to keep the home, they can do so. They would refinance um, the reverse mortgage into a traditional mortgage and keep the home if that was important to them. Okay. Well, what about uh, fees, closing costs, those type of things? I understand they're, they're fairly high. They are, and they're front loaded. They're you know kind of right out there in, in your face, so it does um, shock some people. Um, forward mortgages also have fees, but they're rolled into the payment, and you don't notice them as much. Um, but there there are fees. They are HUD regulated. Some of the reverse mortgage companies uh, to become more competitive are reducing or eliminating fees, so it's becoming more competitive. Mm -hmm. Well, I understand that one of the tips, uh, and we look forward to y'all's article in our December issue of Coming of Age magazine about this subject, and thank y'all for uh, providing that. Certainly. One of the things I noticed was that it really makes a difference how long you expect to live in that home. Talk about a little bit about that. If you intend to stay in your home only, you know, a couple of three more years, it, it may not be the right time. Uh, reverse mortgages are very expensive in the short term because those fees spread over two or three years are very expensive. Uh, if you stay in your home five to ten years, more time to spread those costs out and it becomes less expensive as time goes on. What are some other questions that people might want to ask themselves to really think about, is this the right thing for me? Um, is their home the right place to um, age in place? I, I understand that's a, a new phrase. You know, are there barriers in the home that may make it hard for them as they um, get older? 
things like uh, steep stairways, something right. such as that. Um, what is it you need the money for? Could there be other options? Um, would you want to talk to your family? Because it does affect your heirs. Um, what you intend to do with the money, it, is it going to serve your needs? Um, and, and do you understand, I'm sorry, do you understand how it works is, is mm -hmm. really important. So determine if it's going to meet your needs, you would have to Correct. kind of go through the process at some to some degree to determine what your your payment amount would be, is that correct? Well, there are a lot of uh, calculators on the internet. Uh, AARP has one, a lot of the reverse mortgage lenders have them, where you plug in your zip code, um, your age, and what you think your house value is, and it'll pop up an estimate. So you can, you know, kind of get a feel of what you may receive, and, and will it cover the things you need to do with it. Mm -hmm. Well, I do agree that this is a, a great product if, if it's the right match mm -hmm. for the people, but I also understand that regardless of what company or how someone arranges the reverse mortgage, they do have to go through some counseling. Is that correct? That's correct. It is. Um, mandated by HUD and purpose, purpose is to make sure that um, people have an unbiased third party information um, regarding the loan, making sure they understand how it works and what their alternatives are. Now at what point in the process do they attend that counseling? It, it's best to do it even before you find a lender, like um, but a lot of times we do have, um, you know, after they've been contacted by a lender. Well tell us a little bit more about the services that your organization provides. Um, we have, we do many types of, of counseling. We do the reverse mortgage. We have a debt management program for people that are overextended with unsecured debt. Uh, we help people delinquent on their mortgages, contact their mortgage company to try to arrange uh, an agreement that's uh, agreeable to them both to, you know, keep them in their homes. Uh, we do pre-purchase home buyer counseling, um, budgeting, money management. So the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Well, back to this counseling in regards to the reverse mortgage. Um, what are some of the questions that people ask there, or what are some of the, oh, I didn't know that? Uh, let's see. Um, I would assume that the, the how it would affect the family might be, a, a, you know, for some people, something they would want to stop and think about and talk to their family. Do you personally, do you suggest that they do have a conversation with their heirs? Um, we do. Actually, when we make the appointment, we let them know that um, any family is uh, welcome to come in the office with them or be, at, you know, on the telephone with them. Well, great. Great information, great tips, and we thank you for being here. Uh, one last time, how, people, how can people get some more information? Um, CCCS, WFL, Dot .org on our website. Um, AARP has lots of information and National Council on Aging has a lot of information as well and they can also call our local office 434-0268. Great. Well, thank you for being here. We appreciate it. Thank you.